eternal gracious Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. God, we thank you, God, for this advent season, God. We thank you, God, from the beginning, and you was and you will ever be, God. We thank you, God, that you are ever present in our life, God. So, Lord, we ask you to have your way right now, God. Bless us and keep us, O oh Lord. Touch us in a mighty way, God. Let something be said. Let something be done, God, that will lift up the name of Jesus on this day. It's in the press name of our Lord, say, remember, read my heart, say, amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, you can flip to Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse 18. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the word of the Lord says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she, been, and, she, and she will bring forth a son, and you should call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they should call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. For just a few moments with your thoughts and prayers, I'm going to put a tag on that text and preach from the topic. What happens when God calls you? What happens when God calls you? Can you look at your name and say, neighbor? neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. God's about to call you. What are you going to do? Find another neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. neighbor. When God calls you, what are you going to do? What happens when God calls your name? Can we be real for a moment and say that all of us have a name? In other words, all of us have a meaning to our name. The mere fact that our parents named us the first name means that there's a meaning behind that name and then the last name seals the identity of the family, the tribe, who we belong to. A name is important. A name gives identity, JP. A name tells people who you are and who you belong to. Unfortunately, we've taken people's names, their first names, and we've changed it around. We've given people nicknames. We've given people names that were not their God-given names, but rather we've given them a name that somehow, someway, fits their character. Can we be real for a second and say, Sadly and simply, we've given people names that God would not give them. We call people garden tools. We call people animals. We call people everything except a child of God. But all I'm simply saying is that God has named us, and because God has named us, we must choose to live according to the meaning of our name. Because our name does have meaning, our name has purpose. And because our name has meaning and purpose, that means we are somebody. Let me back up and say that again. The mere fact that we're here today, the mere fact that you know your name, the mere fact that you tell somebody your name, not your nickname, means that your name has value. And our name has value so much that too many people have got to understand that when they call us by our name, our name has meaning, our name has purpose. All I'm simply saying this morning is that our name has meaning. And if we fast forward to the 21st century, we come to discover a brand new feature on our phones, Ron, something called caller ID. I believe all of us have caller ID. It's a function that enables us to see the name as well as the phone number of the person who is calling us. Is it caller ID a great thing? I don't know. Aaliyah went back in the day when I was your age. We didn't have caller 
caller ID. Whenever the phone rang, we picked up the phone. We didn't know who was calling, didn't know if it was friend, family, or even a bill collector. We simply picked up the phone and uttered the words, hello. But now as we fast forward to this day and age, we have caller ID. How many of you have used caller ID before? We use it every day. As soon as the phone rings, before we push ads, we want to take a good look at the caller ID. We want to make sure that we want to talk to the person. We want to make sure that whoever's calling us is the right person to talk to us in the right situation. So we see name and we see number, but hold on for a second. If we get a call and we see something called unknown number or private number, rather pushing the green button to say, hello, may I help you? We push the red button to send the call to voicemail. Can you imagine for a second? We have caller ID that's enabling us to see who's calling us Halima, but when we see something that says unknown or private number, something that we don't recognize, we immediately ignore the call and send it to call it, send it to call a voicemail. Let me help you. I was hanging out with a friend of mine this past weekend as we were conducting business. My friend's phone rang and immediately came up and said, unknown number. I said, why don't you go ahead and answer the phone? My friend said, I can't answer the phone. I don't know who's calling. The caller is going to have to go to voicemail. I said, suppose it was an important call. Suppose it was a call that you needed. It really, my friend said, if it's an important call, they will leave a message. Can I talk to somebody for a second? Have we ever sent somebody to voicemail because we didn't really feel like talking to them. We didn't know who they were. We didn't know the nature of the call. So rather than picking up the phone call, we immediately sent that call to voicemail to get back to them whenever we chose to get back to them. And it brought me to my text today because I believe oftentimes God calls us and because God calls us and does not give us the area code and the number that we automatically know, we tend to send him to voicemail. Am I talking to somebody? This morning we prayed again. God, time and time again. God, I need an answer. God, I need you to show up. And God said, cool, I'm making a phone call down from glory. And he calls us on our spiritual DNA. But because we don't know the phone number, Jason, we immediately send God to voicemail. And because we send God to voicemail, we choose to get back to God whenever we choose back to, choose to get back to him. And oftentimes, we miss out on our blessings. We miss out on our answers. Why? Because God is trying to call us and because we may not know God's voice when God's calling us we send him to voicemail but I'm so happy that God gave us another chance and another opportunity to hear his voice so I got news for you my man Joseph sent me a message to let you know what happens when you hear God's voice because the Bible lets us know that when Joseph was engaged to Mary and Mary as you know was pregnant by the Holy Spirit she was ready to give birth to the king of kings and the lord of lords but this time she's engaged to joseph she's betrothed to joseph who's a good man the bible says he's a he's a just man he comes from the house of david he was a religious man he comes from a religious order he was engaged to be married to mary but all of a sudden he finds out some news that mary is pregnant but he's not the father he, he, he hears news, Salima, that Mary, the love of his life, is pregnant and he's not the father. Can you imagine how this man felt? He said, Mary, I waited for you. Mary, I've given you my love. I've given you my heart. And this is how you repay me. You're pregnant and the baby's not mine. Can you imagine for a second how Joseph felt? Joseph felt hurt because he gave his life to somebody and now he hears some disheartening news. He feels, he feels that he's been alienated. He feels he's been slapped on. And I believe many of us sometimes we've given our heart to something. And when we hear news from somebody that the, that the ministry, that the business is not ours, all of a sudden we realize, hold on God, how is it that I feel mistreated? I feel lied to? Because Joseph, my friend, is simply, he's with Mary and he finds out that Mary has a child and the child is not his. It has to hurt Joseph. Joseph. So Joseph has said, I'm going to let go of Mary. I'm going to let her go quietly. I'm going to give her a divorce. I'm going to let her go quietly because I can't handle it. I'm not ready for this responsibility. God, I can't deal with it. I don't want to deal with the situation. She's pregnant. 
it and let somebody else handle it. This is too much for me. This is too much trouble. I didn't ask for it. I was engaged to her. She wasn't pregnant. I didn't have no issues. I didn't have any problems. But all of a sudden, I got an issue here. And God, I don't want to take responsibility for it. Has anyone ever been like that, that you received some news that you weren't even asking for, you weren't even expecting, and you said, hold on, God. I don't want to deal with this. God, I want to turn my back and run away. God, I want to close the door. But all of a sudden, the Bible lets us know that Joseph thought about these things. He didn't act emotionally because emotionally we would have cussed her out. Emotionally we would have said, see you, don't want to be here. Immediately Joseph said, I got to think about these things. Joseph said, I'm not going to talk to my friends. I'm not going to talk to my family. I'm not going to put my business out in the street. But he said, I'm going to think about these things. And that lets me know that Joseph had to have a relationship with God. He said, before I freak out, I'm going to pray myself up. I'm going to pray for God. I'm going to pray for God because God I don't understand this God how is it God that I'm engaged to a woman and she's a virgin but she's pregnant God I didn't do it I gotta ask the question God who is she be who is she hanging with God but all of a sudden God called and talked to him that night in other words I like what God did God spoke to Joseph in a dream he said hey Joseph I got news for you don't be scared now because that which is in marriage has been conceived of the Holy Spirit in other words Joseph, she ain't been with no man, but what's in her is a seed. What's in her is a baby that's going to change this world. So I need for you, to Joseph, to understand. I don't want you to run. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to stand up and handle your responsibility. I want you to do as I say. I want you to man up for a moment. I want you to put away foolish pride. I want you to make sure you don't hang with your friends. Don't worry what they're going to say. Don't worry what they're going to do. Don't worry about the names they're going to call you. And I believe too many times, my friends, when God has called us to do something, we're always worrying about what people may think and what people may say. But I got news for you. When you stand up for God, it doesn't matter what anyone else says. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. It all matters what God has called you to do. Can we be honest for a second and say, if we had listened to all the people in our life, we would be messed up from the floor. But thank God that we had enough sense and enough commonality to listen to God. Why? Because God called our name. And when God called our name, he was like Joseph. He had a conversation with the sword. He talked to Joseph and said, Joseph, let me let you know about this baby. This baby is going to change the world. This is no ordinary baby. This, this baby is of that of the Holy Spirit. This is the great I am breaking into history. This baby is going to save the world. This baby is not going to condemn people, but draw people unto God. And he said, I got news for you. Mary, the love of your life is carrying the seed inside of her. So I don't need you to run, Joseph, because I called your name. I need you to sit there and work with Mary. I need you to sit there and help raise my baby boy. I need you to sit there and be an example. I need you to sit there and claim responsibility. More importantly, I need you to know that I've called you for such a time as this. No family member has called you. No church has called you. But Joseph, you need to understand that God is calling you, but I'm not calling you just to sit back. I'm calling you to act and be responsible. So he let Joseph know, said, Joseph, this child that's in Mary, his name is Jesus. But I got to let you know, he is the great Emmanuel, which is God with us. I like that right there. He said, that means God said, I'm breaking into history. I've been silent for 400 years from Malachi to the New Testament. I've been silent. Even though I've been silent, I have not been absent. Let me say that again. Even though I've been silent in your life, I have not been absent. And I'm talking to somebody right now. You've been praying to God time and time again. Say, God, why me, God? When are you going to show up? God said, I may be silent, but I'm never absent. Because the Bible says I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So please don't confuse my silence for my absence. 
So he said, he said, I'm always right here with you. I'm letting you know that this baby is Emmanuel, which simply means God with us. And he said, Joseph, I'm going to let you know I'm with you through this journey. I'm going to be with you when you feel by yourself. I'm going to be with you when your family says divorce her and leave. I'm going to be with you when everybody's looking at you crazy. I'm going to be with you when you're trying to do the best that, that God has gave you. I'm going to be with you no matter what. When people and family are turning their back to get you, I'm going to be right there with you. Isn't that some good news when God calls our name that he's always right there with us? Has anyone in here ever been lonely, ever been confused, ever been frustrated or aggravated? But thank God that God was right there with us when no one understood our problems, when everybody turned their back. Thank God that God was always right there with us. Perhaps God has called you to start something, to step out on faith, and all of a sudden you felt that you were by yourself. But God said, I'm right there with you because I called you. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I got to clear the land and strip for all the haters to get out of your life. So when I clear all the haters, I'm still right there with you. And when I bless you, you will know it's nothing but the Lord that made a way out of no way. What happens when God calls your name? He lets you know that he's always with you. But, but the Bible lets us know her name of that. We, Joseph woke up after he heard these things. He was aroused from his sleep and did as the Lord had commanded. See, see, that blows me right there. See, see what happens when God calls our name, we got to just simply do. He didn't say, let me pray about it. He didn't say, let me talk to other people about it. He didn't say, let me fast on it. But he said, I'm going to do exactly what the Lord has commanded. And I believe too many times when we pray to God and God gives us an answer, rather than go ahead and do it, we tend to chill and go back and pray. Mm -hmm. God gave us the answer. Mm -hmm. God blessed us. But rather than say, yes, God, yes. we tend to go ahead and go pray. Yes, right. I'm not knocking prayer, but if God has answered your prayer, rather than do, we tend to chill. And because we tend to chill, we miss our blessings and all we always want to complain to God. And God, I've called your name. I've given you the answer. I've made a way for you. But you were sitting back chilling, operating under fear rather than operating under faith. And I challenge somebody today, when God calls your name, don't say, God, I'm scared. Just say, here I am, Lord God. Let thy will be done. What happens when God calls your name? God is expects all of us to go ahead and do what he's called us to do. But the Bible lets us know that Joseph did not know Mary until she gave birth. Joseph said, Mary, what's in you is, is fertile ground. Well, what's in you is sacred. What's in you, I can't even touch. So I'm not going to incorporate my sin upon your purity. Ooh, that's some good stuff. Y'all missed that. Let me back up and say that again. Mary, the Holy Spirit came in you, so I'm not going to contaminate what God has placed in you. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to nurture you. I'm going to be right there with you, but I'm not going to contaminate you. Why? Because God has called me to do something good. And that's my word for somebody right now. When God has put something in you, don't allow someone to contaminate contaminate you with drama or trauma. When someone, when God plays something good in you, say if you can't be on God's program, you got to say, see it, don't want to be it. Why? Because what's in me is too sacred to be tampered with. But Joseph said, that's why I did what I had to do because God called my name. So I'm going to give you three and we out of here. The first thing that you need to understand what happens when God calls your name is that God gets your attention by removing distractions from your life. Uh, Joseph said, I was in a dream, Helena. I, I, I was sleeping. I had no distractions. In other words, I had no other voices speaking into my ear, interrupting what God has for me. And that's why I want to tell somebody right now, when God is about to speak into your life, he's got to remove distractions. He's got to either move you out or he's got to move people out of your way. Y'all missed that. See, when God wants to speak to you, he doesn't want everybody all in your ear because if everybody's all in your ear, you can't hear from God. So God said, I've got to remove distractions. I wish here I, I, I could make it plain for you. I believe it was at night. It was 2004, 
um, I was I was a facilitator working with at-risk kids, and we had a particular trip. We were going to an old slave plantation in Virginia, and we got there. I had one of my best friends with me, and, and we got there on the Friday night. And when we got there, we toured the premises, and every see everything seemed nice. Most of these kids had never been out of D.C., so can you imagine leaving D.C., going to a slave plantation? It blew their mind, but we went there on the mission to teach the kids that you got to get away from the mess here in order to clear your mind. So we got to the plantation. One of my best friends, it's 11 o'clock at night. It's dark out there. We're in the woods. We can't see anything. He tells me, he said, Rev, bring the kid out and keep on, keep on walking until I tell you to stop. I looked at the man. I said, you must be crazy. I said, it's 11 o'clock at night. I don't see no moon. I don't see no lights. You got to be crazy. I'm not going to be walking out here in the woods hearing your voice. And he said, just do what I need you to do. So we kept on walking. I got eight of the kids. We walked out there. And about after about three minutes, we walking out there. Halima, I see you looking at me kind of funny. We said, stop right here. We stopped in the middle of the field. He said, now gather in a circle. We gather in a circle. He said, look towards heaven. We look towards heaven. He said, I don't want anyone talking. I want everyone to concentrate and look towards heaven. We're sitting there for about 20, 30 minutes. Look here. My mind is kind of, kind, of, kind of coming up with many things. I'm trying to figure out what's the purpose of us sitting down on the ground at 11, 11, 30 at night looking up towards heaven. Immediately the brothers, they said, let the Lord speak to you. Okay, y'all missed that. He said, let the Lord speak to you. I said, man, I got to get back inside. He said, nah, man, just be quiet. Let the Lord speak to you. And so the Lord started talking to all of us in the building. So we went back to the room. And let me fast forward the story. When we came back to the, came back to, after we left the facility, got back into the area, one young man said, you know what, Rev? I got a scholarship going to Penn State of football. Another young man said, I got a scholarship going to Georgetown. Now there's four minutes after. Academic. Why? Because all of us had to get away from the distractions they hear from Almighty God, which lets all of us know that greatness is within us as long as we submit unto God. And that's my word for somebody right now, that you have to get out and get away. When God wants your attention, he'll make, he'll make you shut off the TV, shut off the computer, shut off the cell phone. He'll make you shut off everything so he can speak to you. And when God speaks to you, don't be afraid. Just simply say, yes God, you're calling my name. And because God made you, and God knows you, he'll call you by your first name. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Jason, I forgot, because you know, I did go to school. Let me give everybody my education here. I looked at the word Joseph, and it simply means Joseph, which simply means Jehovah has added. I like that. See, 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 Joe, Jehovah has added what simply means, Joseph, I'm going to add blessings unto you. Because of your faithfulness, I'm going to add blessings. Y'all missed that. Because you're doing what I called you to do, I'm now going to bless you by being a father and being a husband to marry. Oh, that's good stuff right there. Because of your being, I'm now going to add a blessing unto you. That you are in the same house with my son, Jesus Christ, that you can partake and raise it, the son of God, that you are in the house of Almighty God. Why? Because of your obedience. And he said, because of your wisdom, I'm now going to add you. But let me give you the second thing that the text says, what happens when God calls you by name? Not only will he remove distractions, but guess what? He sets forth your agenda. Joseph was engaged to marry, but God said, let me give you your agenda. Your agenda is to take Mary as your wife. I know, I know you don't understand this, Joseph, but, but I just need you to trust me for a second. I, I know you want to freak out about it, but I just need you to just hang in there with me and have a little bit of faith because faith will open up doors for you, Joseph. So, Joseph, I'm going to set forth your agenda, and your agenda is simply to take Mary on as your wife. Don't worry about anybody else. Just take Mary as your wife. Don't worry what family members may say. Just take Mary on as your wife. Don't worry if everybody starts calling your name. Just take Mary on as your wife. I want to talk to somebody right now. Whatever God has called you to do, go ahead and do it. If it's to go back to school, go back to school. If it's to start your business, go ahead and start your business. If it's to go ahead and do whatever, just go ahead because God has set forth your agenda. Why? Because God has called you 
by name. Okay, let me help you out. Let me help you out. I wish I could talk to some Old Testament prophets. You know, you know Abram, right? When Abram was just chilling with his family, he God said, just go, Abram. And Abram left. Why? Because Abram had an agenda. Because Abram had an agenda, God called his name. And because God called Abram's name, Abram went ahead and went off. Y'all missed out. I wish I could talk to Samuel for a second. Samuel was a little young man born hearing God's voice because God had an agenda for him. Isn't it something when you hear God's voice over your life that God says, go ahead, I got your agenda. All you got to do is be faithful and walk the walk. Don't worry about anything or everybody. Just go ahead and continue forth. Just walk straight. Don't look back. Why? Because God has an agenda. But you're not shouting. Can I give you my story for a second? Um, 2004, when I started the church, after I started the church, one of our first members said, Rev, why don't you go ahead and write a message? Why don't you go ahead and write a message? I said, I'm no writer. My dad is in here. He'll let you know I didn't like writing in school. I, I really didn't care too much about it. I was just an okay student. I, I wasn't the best student, nor was I the worst. And I was an okay student. Didn't like writing. But one lady said, why don't you go ahead and write and write a message? So guess what? 2004 in October, I wrote one message. She liked it. She said, well, why don't you write another one? I went ahead and wrote another one. And guess what? Seven years later, I'm still writing. Seven, I, within that seven years, I had one book published. And guess what? After seven years, number two's coming out very shortly. Why? Because God set forth the agenda. It wasn't my plan. It wasn't what I thought. But God set forth the agenda. I'm not bragging. I'm testifying that if you just do what God told you to do, God will make a way for you. It's not for all of us to understand. Because if I felt like I was right in back then, but God put something in me that they keep on writing. And that's my word for somebody right now. It may not be what you want. It may not be what you feel. But when God calls you by name, he'll set forth your agenda. He will bless you from the floor. Don't worry about your life or worry about what God has called you to do. But here's my last point. The last point is that you need to understand what happens when God calls you is God will remind you of his presence. That's what he told Joseph. He said, Joseph, I'm Emmanuel. Emmanuel is coming with you, which simply means God with us. In other words, Joseph, you're not going to be by yourself. In other words, I'm bringing my best, my only begotten son into the world to let you know that I'm always with you. You may have seen that I've forgotten about you, but I'm always with you. And that's what I'm trying to let somebody know right now. When God calls your name, he said, I'm always there with you. Don't let age stand in your way. Don't let economics stand in your way. Don't let education stand in your way. Why? Because God, I'm going to remind you of my presence and him closing right now. But let me tell you about my man George Foreman. You know George Foreman. He used to be a big time boxer way back in the day when he was young, Ronnie. He was a heavyweight champion, but George Foreman had a crazy thought one day. He said, let me come out of retirement and go ahead and box again. Everyone say, George, you can't do it, George. George, you're overweight. George, you're too old. But George had something on the inside. He had the spirit leading him and guiding him to let him know, I'm right there with you, George. You may be overweight, but I'm right there with with you. You may be too old, but I'm right there with you. When now your haters are trying to bring you down, I'm right there with you. So to fast forward, this George Foreman kept going in the ring, and then he got his title shot. And when he got his title shot, he said, I'm going to put on the trunks that I wore way back in the day. I'm going to wear to the ring, and I'm going to go ahead and get my title. Well, you do realize George Foreman knocked out the, his opponent and regained the heavyweight championship of the world. Why? It wasn't because of anything George did, but it was because of the presence of Almighty God in his life. And that's my word for somebody right now. When God calls you, just realize his presence will lead you, his presence will comfort you, and his presence will take you to the promised land. Okay, okay, y'all missed this. See, his presence will take you to the promised land. See, you may not understand it, but I've come to hang around God long enough to realize I ain't got to understand everything that God does. I'm going to let God just be. We mm -hmm. see, see, when I let God be, and I say, yes, Lord, then God takes care of everything else. All I got to do is just show up. And when I show up, God just somehow order my step. Y'all miss that. See, when God orders my step, he'll open up the doors. He'll clear the pathway for me to walk through. 
and so when I'm walking, I can truly say, not by my will, not by my might, but nothing but the Lord that's been in my life, leading me and guiding me along the way. And then I can be like David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Because he called my name. Let's look to the Lord and pray.